If you've ever spent any time with Jenkins, you know the feeling. The endless clicking, click, configure, click, save, and then just hope it works. But what if I told you there's a much better way? A way to treat your entire build pipeline like, well, like the actual code it's building. That's exactly what we're going to dive into today. How to ditch those fragile clicks and move to rock-solid code using something called a Jenkins file. So, here's what we've got on tap. First, we'll talk about why the whole click-based setup is, let's just say, problematic. Then, we'll meet the hero of our story, Pipeline as Code. After that, we're going to roll up our sleeves and build our first Jenkins file from the ground up. Then the fun part, we'll add some serious superpowers to it. And finally, we'll wrap up with how to keep your code from becoming a total mess. Sound good? Let's go. All right, first up, the problem with clicks. Let's really get into the weeds on this. Why is managing everything through that Jenkins UI just not going to cut it for any serious long-term project? I mean, we've all been there, right? You spend hours, maybe even days, getting a Jenkins job configured just right. It's a masterpiece. But where does it live? It's all trapped inside a web UI. And that means one wrong click, one tiny setting someone forgets to change, and boom, the whole thing can just fall apart. It feels so fragile, so brittle. And forget about trying to figure out who changed what and why. It's a nightmare. And this table just lays it all out, doesn't it? On one side, you've got the old way, the UI. It's all manual clicks, which means it's super prone to human error. Trying to track changes? Good luck. Replicating a job exactly? Almost impossible. But then look at the other side, the new way, with code. Your entire pipeline is defined in a single text file. That means you can check it into Git right alongside your application code. It's version controlled, you can see every single change, it's easily reviewable in a pull request, and you can reuse and share pipelines like it's nothing. It's a complete game changer. You're no longer just clicking buttons, you're writing software that builds your software. Okay, so what's the secret sauce here? What's the piece of magic that makes all of this possible? Well, it all comes down to one single powerful file. It's time to meet the star of the show, the Jenkins file. And really, it's that simple. It is just a text file. Usually you just name it Jenkins file, capital J, no extension, and you check it right into the root of your source code repository. And think about what that means. Your build process now lives with your code. When your code changes, your pipeline can change right along with it, all in the same commit, all in perfect sync. Now, once you dive in, you'll find there are basically two flavors of Jenkins file. You've got scripted pipeline, which is the original. Think of it like a blank canvas. It's pure groovy script, so you can do literally anything you can imagine. It's super flexible and powerful, but that can also be a little intimidating, right? On the other hand, you have declarative pipeline. This is the newer, more structured approach. It's kind of like building with Legos. You have predefined blocks and sections that you snap together. It's much easier to learn, way easier to read, and for 90% of what you need to do, it's perfect. And because of that, it's what we're gonna focus on today. Okay, enough talk. Theory is great, but let's actually build something. We're gonna construct our very first Jenkins file right now, piece by piece, starting with the absolute core components. So every single declarative pipeline you'll ever see is built from these four fundamental pieces. First, you have pipeline. That's just the big wrapper around everything. Easy enough. Then agent. This is super important. It tells Jenkins where to run the job. Should it run on any available machine, a specific one, inside a Docker container, the agent section handles that. Next up, stages. This is basically the container for all the different parts of your workflow, like build, test, deploy. And finally, inside each stage, you have steps. This is where the real work happens, the actual commands you want to execute. Let's see how these all snap together. And here we have it. This is literally the most basic, bare-bones Jenkins file you can write. It's like the hello world of Jenkins pipelines. You see our pipeline block wrapping the whole thing. Then we have agent any, which is just a simple way of saying, hey Jenkins, I don't care where you run this, just find any available machine. And then we have our empty stages block, just waiting for us to tell it what to do. Okay, let's fill in that blank. Inside our stages section, we're adding our very first stage. We have to give it a name, so let's call it build. Makes sense, right? And inside that stage, we add a steps block. This is where the magic happens. For now, we're keeping it simple and just using the echo command to print a message. This is just to prove that it's working. And look at that. Building on what we just did, we can just add more stages. It's a pattern. We've added a test stage and a deploy stage. And Jenkins is smart enough to run these one after another in the order we define them. So it'll build, 
Then if that succeeds, it'll test. And if that succeeds, it'll deploy. In just a few lines of code, we've mapped out a whole CI-CD workflow. It's clean, it's readable, and it's all right here in the code. Okay, so a simple linear pipeline is a fantastic start. But let's be real. The real world is messy. We need our pipelines to be smarter, more flexible. This is where we level up and start adding some real superpowers. Declarative syntax gives us this awesome toolkit of what are called directives. Think of them as special instructions. You've got when, which lets you decide if a stage should run at all. Super useful. Post is for all your cleanup tasks. You know, sending a Slack notification if the build fails or cleaning up workspaces. Environment lets you set up variables. Parameters is a huge one. It lets you ask for user input when you kick off a build. And Tools helps you specify which version of, say, Java or Maven you need. So many cool things to play with. Let's look at a really practical example with the when directive. Check this out. Inside our test stage, we've added a when block that says branch main. It's that simple. Now, this entire stage will only run when we're building the main branch. Any other branch, it just gets skipped. This is an absolute game changer for controlling your workflow, like making sure you never accidentally deploy a feature branch to production. We can also make our pipelines interactive, which is really cool. We can define parameters that Jenkins will ask for when someone clicks build. The common ones you'll use all the time are string, which is just the text box, perfect for a version number, boolean, which gives you a simple checkbox for a yes-no option, and choice, which creates a drop-down list. This is awesome for things like letting a user pick which deployment environment they want to target, like staging or production. So let's put two of these superpowers together. At the top, we're defining a Boolean parameter called run tests, and we're setting it to true by default. Then, down in our test stage, our when condition is no longer checking for a branch, it's checking the value of that parameter. So what happens? When you go to run this job in Jenkins, you'll see a little checkbox that says run tests. If you leave it checked, the test stage runs. If you uncheck it, poof, the entire stage gets skipped. It's a super simple way to give people control over how the pipeline behaves. Okay, for our last section, let's talk about a problem that everyone eventually runs into. Your pipeline starts simple, but then it grows and grows, and pretty soon your Jenkins file is hundreds of lines long and filled with all this complicated logic. It becomes a mess. So let's talk about a critical best practice for keeping things clean, using external scripts. Yeah, this probably looks familiar to some of you. You've got your deploy stage, and inside it is this massive script block with like 50 lines of gnarly, groovy code that's calculating versions, connecting to servers, uploading files. It works, sure, but just look at it. It's impossible to tell what's going on at a glance. You've completely lost the plot. The high-level what is buried under all the low-level how. But now, look at the after. It's beautiful. All that messy code is gone. Instead, we have this one line at the top, def utils equals load deploy utils dot groovy. This pulls in another file from our repository, and now our entire deploy stage is just a single, simple function call, utils dot perform deployment. All that complexity is now tucked away neatly in that other file. The Jenkins file itself is back to being simple and readable. You can see exactly what it's supposed to do without getting lost in the details. And that's really the big idea here. Your Jenkins file shouldn't be a giant thousand-line script. It should be an orchestrator, a conductor. Its job is to define the high-level flow of your process, not get bogged down in the nitty-gritty. When you do this right, your Jenkins file actually becomes documentation for your build process. So there you have it. By moving from clicks to code with the Jenkins file, you're fundamentally changing how you work. Your build process is no longer this fragile thing hidden in a UI. It's a first-class citizen in your repository. It's versionable, it's reviewable, it's reusable. You can apply all the same software engineering best practices to it that you do for your application code. So the real question is, now that you have this power, what are you gonna build with it? Hey, we're diving into a huge shift in automation getting your Jenkins builds out of the manual click fest of the UI and into powerful version-controlled code. Yep, we're talking all about the Jenkins file. Here's how we're going to break it down. We'll start with the big why, why you'd even want to move to pipeline as code. Then we'll dissect a Jenkins file piece by piece. After that, we'll level up and add some logic, figure out how to handle secrets, and finally make our pipelines interactive. All right, let's get into it. So first up, why bother writing your pipeline as code? 
Well, it's all about making your build process just as reliable, transparent, and, well, sane as the application code it's actually building. On the left, you've got the old way. You know the drill. Clicking through endless menus in the Jenkins UI. It's totally manual, you have no idea who changed what, and trying to copy it is a nightmare. But on the right, you have pipeline as code. Your entire build is defined in one file that lives right there in your project's repository. It's clear, it's version controlled, you can see the history, it's a total game changer. And the heart and soul of this whole thing is the Jenkins file. And really, it's just a text file, that's it. You name it Jenkins file, you check it into Git, and Jenkins just knows what to do. It finds the file and runs the pipeline inside. It's so simple, but incredibly powerful. Now, you've got two flavors of Jenkins file syntax to choose from. There's scripted, which is the original. It's super powerful if you're a groovy wizard, but honestly, for most of us, declarative is the way to go. It's newer, it has a really clean, easy to understand structure, and it's just plain easier to read. So for this explainer, we're gonna focus 100% on declarative pipelines. Okay, enough theory. Let's get our hands dirty and actually build a Jenkins file from scratch. We're gonna look at the key building blocks you'll use pretty much every single time. Every single declarative Jenkins file starts with this, the pipeline block. Just think of it as the main container, the big wrapper for your entire process. Everything else we're about to talk about lives inside these two curly braces. So the first thing you gotta tell Jenkins inside your pipeline is where to run the job. We do that with an agent. Now, agent any is the simplest way to go. It just means, hey Jenkins, run this on any machine you've got free. It's perfect for getting started. Next up is the stages block. This is where the magic really happens. This block holds all the different phases of your process. You know, things like building, testing, and deploying. All the actual work gets defined in here. And inside stages, you'll define one or more stage blocks. Each stage gets a nice clear name, like build. And inside that, it has a steps block. The steps? Those are the actual commands Jenkins is gonna run. In this case, we're just using a simple echo command to print a message. So let's just recap that structure. You have the pipeline wrapper, the agent that says where to run it, stages to organize the work into logical chunks, and steps to define what to actually do. You get these four down and you've pretty much mastered the basics of any Jenkins file. Okay, a basic pipeline is cool, but real world projects, they need to be a little bit smarter. So let's move on and see how we can add some conditional logic and how we can run actions after our build is done. Ah, the classic question. You probably don't want to deploy to production every single time someone pushes to a feature branch, right? Of course not. So how do we control which stages run and when? The answer is this awesome little thing called the when directive. You just add a when block inside a stage and you can tell it exactly when it should run. This example is super clear. When branch dev literally means this run test stage will only run if the build is for the dev branch. Any other branch, Jenkins just skips it. So simple. Now, what about actions you wanna take after the main build is over, like sending a Slack notification or cleaning up? For that, you use a post block at the end of your pipeline. Inside post, you can say things like always for cleanup tasks, success for a victory message, or failure to send out those critical alerts when things go wrong. Look, your pipeline doesn't live in a bubble. It has to interact with the outside world. It needs to access credentials, environment variables, all kinds of build tools. Let's see how a Jenkins file makes that secure and easy. So these are really the three big ones. Jenkins gives you a bunch of handy environment variables for free, like the name of the branch. It has a fantastic, secure system for managing your credentials so you never, ever have to hard code a password. And you can easily tell it what build tools your pipeline needs, like a specific version of Maven. Now, to use those secrets safely, you absolutely need the credentials binding plugin. This thing is essential. What it does is it takes a secret that's stored safely in Jenkins and temporarily makes it available as an environment variable, but without ever printing the actual secret value in the logs. And here's how you use it. You wrap the commands that need the secret in this with credentials block. You point it to the ID of the credential in Jenkins, here it's server creds, and you give the variables a name, like user and pass. Only the code inside this block can see those variables. The second it's done, poof, they're gone. It's so clean and secure. Using build tools is even simpler. You just add a tools block near the top of your pipeline. Here, we're just saying, hey, for this pipeline, I need the tool named maven-3.8.1. 
And just like that, Jenkins makes sure the MVN command is available everywhere in your pipeline. Easy. Okay, for our final section, let's make our pipelines flexible. Sometimes you need to provide a little input when you kick off a build, right? Like maybe a version number or a toggle to skip a step. We do that with parameters. When you define parameters, Jenkins automatically builds a little form for you on the build page. And these are the most common types you'll use. String gives you a text box, perfect for a version number. Boolean gives you a simple checkbox. And choice gives you a dropdown, which is great for things where you want to prevent typos. And here's how you connect it all together. Up top, in a parameters block, we define a Boolean called execute tests. Then, way down in our test stage, we use a when block to check its value. This expression is just asking, hey, did the user check the box? If params.execute tests is true, the stage runs. If they unchecked it, Jenkins skips it entirely. It's a fantastic way to make your pipelines dynamic. So, here's the big takeaway. By moving from clicks to a Jenkins file, you've totally transformed your build process. It's not some mysterious black box anymore. It's transparent, it's repeatable, and it lives right alongside your application as code that you can review and track. So the only real question left is, what are you going to automate next?